Is the oil market as bad off as the markets at least are pricing them out to be this morning? We know that they've had a huge run over the last year, but these are massive moves to the downside that we've seen as of late. Yeah, no, I think you're exactly right. I don't think fundamentals justify this kind of move. This is very much a symptom of low liquidity. Very few people are around, given the holiday season. Um, a lot of people already closed their positions pretty much from mid-November after the volatility we've seen in both oil and gas. You know, there are lots of traders who've had a very good year. So why keep their positions open with all the uncertainties around Omicron and, you know, the SPR release at that point? Um, we just had too much. And the, the weather hasn't been cooperative either. It's been a warm start to the winter. A lot of banks were too bullish. Um, we've been saying that for a while, talking about gas to oil switching. Our numbers were a lot smaller. Um, and I think, you you know, once if the market had bought into some of those big bank numbers, then they're having to revise those lower now with the winter that we've seen so far. So lots of reasons to not be long. So this is much more a long liquidation than a suggestion that fundamentals have weakened. I mean, you know, if you look at Dubai, Dubai remains very backwardated, a sign that Asian demand is still strong. Uh, so, yeah, the, the liquidation is what's driving Brent and WTI. All right. So if that, if that liquidation is a short term phenomenon that will resolve itself, what exactly is you, in your mind? the biggest driving force behind the oil market right now? Is it on the supply side? Is it on the demand side? Is it Omicron? Uh, what exactly is that, that, that thing that is really pushing the markets around? It's got to be the demand in Omicron. I mean, obviously, they're related. Um, it, different governments are taking very different approaches. Obviously, over the weekend, you've seen some European governments uh, coming out with full lockdown. So that's leading to jitters that, you know, this is a repeat of you know, last winter or even parts of this spring when oil demand took a pretty significant hit. But what we are seeing is that it's different this time around. A, a lot more people are vaccinated. Globally, about 50 percent of the world's population is vaccinated. B, uh, Last, this time last year or even earlier this year, Asia was still in lots of mobility, under lots of mobility restriction. Now Asia is opening up and you are seeing a lot stronger demand out of the East. And finally, um, I think people are necessarily as compliant. And I think you've seen that with governments as well. Very few are actually coming out with out and out lockdowns. It's been much more guidance around, look, let's you know, we're, we're advising you to not mix. Um, and, you know, we've seen that on the streets and traffic data as well. It just hasn't come off nearly as much as what we've seen in the past. So, yes, of course, there's downside to demand, but not nearly to the same extent as what we've seen in the last, like, 12 to 18 months. Uh, uh, Marita, I'm, I'm wondering, in your, in your role as an analyst, uh, somebody who watches all these markets, you have a, a, a number of models and a, a number of different things that you look at. What exactly, then, in your mind, is the biggest kind of factor you're looking at with regard to the return of travel demand? Do you, do you look at things like, like airline bookings? Do you look at things like, like here in the U.S., TSA screenings for passengers? What exactly would signal to you that there's a, an increased demand, um, demand for fuel, given the fact that, that travel may or may not be returning? I think the, <clears throat> sorry, the, the points, the, or the data points you talked about are exactly right. We scrape um, airline data or airport uh, and traffic data and airline booking data from around the world. So we are keeping very close tabs on that. We're looking at vehicles, miles traveled as well, because even though people may not be flying, they are driving. Um, so that's another factor. But I think broader macro, uh, it's the hospitalizations that we're keeping an eye out for for the next two weeks. Obviously, case counts around the world are surging right now. If as people, are, as, as a lot of scientists are saying that this strain is milder, then hospitals shouldn't be overwhelmed. I think that's going to give people more confidence to get back on the road again, road or planes. Uh, and I think that's what we're really looking for in the kind of next few weeks around January in particular, that do we see demand pick back up again after the new year? Because if that does, then you absolutely think that, you know, we would come out sure. very confidently and say this correction is overdone and prices should head higher.